We've all heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Not only does the cast of Ranking of Kings do exactly that, but unfortunately, I did as well and it almost cost me dearly. If you enjoy underdog stories, creative worlds, or complex characters, then here's why Ranking of Kings, Prince Boji, and this video are for you. It took a lot of convincing for me to give Ranking of Kings a shot. I can't be the only one who finds this art style unappealing, but over time, there was way too much talk about how good it was, so I had to give it a shot. And I was disappointed. Don't get me wrong, the first episode is good, but it had a lot working against it. Not only was the art an issue, but as the title states, the main character, Prince Boji, is deaf. He's a mute main character. The supporting cast? About as cliche as they get. The kind king dying? Check. The evil stepmother? Check. The entitled stepbrother prince? Check. And so I dropped it for a year, until I was finally bored enough to give it another shot. And I'm so glad I did, because it's outstanding, and everything I thought I knew, yeah, I was wrong. That deaf child? A truly admirable underdog. The kind king who dies? You could make the argument that every part of that sentence is wrong. The evil stepmother? Not so evil after all. The entitled prince? One of the most complex characters the show has, and that's saying a lot. In fact, Character complexity is one of the greatest strengths of this show. There's a group of guards called the Big Four, and I swear to God, there's a 10 episode stretch where all of these characters swap back and forth between, I hate this guy, and you know what, actually, I kind of understand this guy, based on the situation, until you realize, you know what, these guys are all extremely complex, and not at all who I thought they were. This extends to everyone, but is done best with Queen Hilling, and Prince Dida. Hilling gets the full-on evil stepmother push from the start, even down to her character design and big pointy nose, except we see she cares deeply for Prince Boji. This gets reinforced with her abilities, or in flashbacks where we see her struggle to connect with him, but never stop putting in the effort to do so. The more we see of her, the more we're shown she's truly a great mother, even if she struggles to show it at times. Dida could have an entire video made on his character alone. I won't get into it here, but his story is absolutely crazy. He's equal parts exactly who you think he is, and also the complete opposite. Prince Despa is another character who isn't at all what you'd expect. When you learn he's supposed to be this legendary mentor, you get a certain impression of him. Then you see he's vain, greedy, and kind of a hooligan. While simultaneously kind-hearted and loyal, it makes you question how the hell he's going to train the weakest guy in the kingdom to become powerful. And Boji? Boji is just awesome. I cannot fathom how difficult it was to make a deaf character compelling, but they did. Boji is so likable and so easy to root for as the underdog. When he's wronged, you care. He wins you over in unexpected ways, but ones that make a lot of sense. When someone has this small of a stature, and they have zero strength, for reasons that get explained, it seems impossible to compete with powerful opponents, or to earn his rightful place atop the throne. But Boji is the hardest working character in the show. If he's too weak to do direct damage, he'll have to be incredibly precise with his technique, and avoid taking damage at all costs. So Despa comes out with the genius plan for Boji to exploit on opponents and objects. It's brilliant and logical, but also thrilling and something you can admire him for, because the way he fights requires such precision, timing, and effort that you can't help but be in awe of how difficult that would truly be to master. His journey is full of twists and turns, most of which shocked the hell out of me, but he remains an underdog worthy of admiration throughout. His kindness never wavers, which is why his relationship with Kage is so wholesome. Their dedication to each other is both earned and inspiring. In season one, you spend so much time on Boji's journey that you forget that the show is called Ranking of Kings. The kings actually get ranked, and first place gets a choice of rewards, and for some reason, they all choose the same one, before succumbing to madness somehow. Prince Oaken is an immortal warrior, he has ties to important figures, and he's lost his mind. He's equal parts terrifying and silly. I've never seen anything like him before. One moment he's a horror villain, and the next, he's a goofball. He's wholly unique, and when they say in show he's a bad matchup for Boji, they mean it. And you see that strength or speed isn't all that matters, but skill set 
and matchups determine winners of fights, which simply enhances the experience of watching them. There are a few characters who I don't find worth redeeming at this point, that the show goes to great lengths trying to do so, but overall, characters are a major strong suit in this show. Everyone has depth, and if you like or dislike someone early on, prepare to see your opinion flip multiple times. Also, for as critical of the art as I've been, the animation is legit awesome. The fight sequences are handled extremely well, there's all sorts of cool choreography, and the world itself is so vast and interesting that it enhances the art. Let's talk about the world quick. They have all sorts of different kingdoms, all of which feel different, and one of them is basically in Hell, which has such a cool design. The world does have some standard fantasy stuff like giants, gods, demons, and whatnot, but the locations are anything but standard, and there are monsters that pop up that I've never seen before. We've only been teased a lot of what's out there, but I'm fascinated by the glimpses we've gotten of what's to come, as well as the ranking of kings itself. We know so little about it, but it's the title, so it's obviously going to be a big deal going forward. The one thing that does bug me about this show, shockingly isn't the art, you actually get used to that quickly, it's how far the show goes to try and redeem pretty much everyone, sometimes without ample punishment for their actions. Forgiveness can be handed out too easily, and instead of feeling earned, that can further your dislike for a character. Actions have consequences, and stories need them. With that said, everything else so far has been a joy, and I highly recommend this to anyone watching, especially those who love a classic underdog. Now I'm on to season two.